Welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA, reaching you live from Abuja. I am Nolin Ebel Ame with the news. We begin the news with the judiciary. The Supreme Court has dismissed the appeal of the People's Democratic Party and its candidate Atiku Abubakar. In a unanimous judgment, the seven-man panel of justices, led by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Ibrahim Tanko Mohammed, maintained that the appeal lacked in merit. Dele Atumbi reports. The candidate of the PDP in the February 23, 2019 presidential election, Atiku Abubakar, and its party approached the Supreme Court, urging the court to obtain the decision of the Court of Appeal, which dismissed their petition for lacking a merit. The appellant came with one main appeal and six interlocutory appeals. Having underbreated over the main appeal, the lead counsel to the appellant, Levi Uzogu S.A.N., urged the court to allow the appeal, challenging the victory of President Muhammadu Buhari. Counsel to President Muhammadu Buhari, Wali Olani Pekun, S.A.N., appealed to the court to dismiss the appeal as it cries to I Evan for evidence which he did not adduce at the trial court. He argued that the constitution did not recommend for a candidate standing election to attach his credentials with the form. In their adoborations, counsel to the APC, Latif Agbim, S.A.N., and Ustaz Usman, S.A.N., counsel to INEC, pleaded with the court to dismiss the appeal. The issue of the election is now behind us, and uh, I believe the government, the people of Nigeria, will work in unison to take the Nigeria uh, project to the next level. We as lawyers, this is how far we have gone. We can go, and we cannot say anything more than that. We want to appreciate you, members of the press. We've also done very, very well. Well, this country belongs to all of us. We've done our best. Our clients have done their best. Um, the rest are for Nigeria. This election and the judgment is not about President Buhari or His Excellency Alaji Atiku Abubakar. It is about the future of our country. We say INEC does not have that type and of server. And they say, say it is through that server that results were transmitted. Then we ask them, who got this, this thing? They say it was a whistleblower. Does not belong to INEC. And if, if, if you go by it, even if it did, INEC has no right unless there's an amendment to the Electoral Act to transmit the results electronically. In a judgment delivered by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Ibrahim Tanko Muhammad, dismissed the appeal for lacking a merit. The Supreme Court will give reason for its judgment at a later date. This judgment has brought to an end all the legal issues involving the conduct of the 2019 presidential election. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. Meanwhile, President Muhammadu Buhari has formally reacted to the ruling by the Supreme Court of Nigeria dismissing the petition by the People's Democratic Party and its candidate Atiku Abubakar against his election, describing it as a reaffirmation of the will freely expressed by Nigerians through the ballot box. Speaking to State House correspondent Adam Usambo in Riyadh on the sidelines of the Future Investment Summit, the President promised to sustain efforts at dismantling national development obstacles and taking the country to the greater height. Moving on, the welfare of the judiciary must be given priority if the desired independence of the judiciary in Nigeria is to achieve its purpose. This is the position of the National Assembly's Joint Committees on Judiciary during the 2020 Budget Defense. At the Joint Budget Defense of the Judiciary, where the Supreme Court 
Court of Appeal, National Industrial Court, FCT High Court, and the customary court Abuja, among others. A proposal for 2020 is put at 8.7 billion. So this is 629 million 663,366.29 Kobo, or about 6.74 percent less than the 9.3 billion appropriated for 2019. I believe it's time to really squarely address issues of their welfare. And we have to take it beyond even the salary of our justices and judges and judicial staff to look into issues of their allowances. And we want to appreciate on behalf of our chairman here, appreciate the security agencies in rising to the occasion to make sure that um, Justice Dogo was uh, rescued and uh, reunited with his family. Similarly, Nigerians in the Diaspora Commission is seeking collaboration with the National Assembly for a legislation that will make Nigerians in the Diaspora exercise their civic rights during elections. Chairman of the Commission, Abike Dabiri Erewa, made this known during her 2020 budget exercise of the Commission at the National Assembly. And I think it will also have a positive impact on voting in Nigeria. We're hoping that you're going to amend the laws to make electronic voting possible, you know, and all that. At that point in time, diaspora voting, you can make it a reality. Let's look at what this commission can do, what this commission means to Nigerians at home and abroad, the lives, the value this commission can add. I think that should be our focus. The commission says it is also working on the census of Nigerians and correctional centers in the diaspora. Still on judiciary, the federal high court sitting in Abuja has affirmed the disqualification of the Young Progressives Party from participating in the November 2019 governorship election in Bielsa State. Justice Okong Abang ruled that the disqualification is in line with the Constitution. Olabodi Arewa reports. The Young Progressives Party is Bielsa governorship candidate Pere Agadabiri and his running mate Ikoli Ayibanda approach the court seeking to nullify INS disqualification of their candidacy on the grounds that Ecolia Ibanda was ineligible to contest. INEC has sent a letter to the YPP after the deadline for submission of names had lapsed, pointing out that Ayibanda was 34 years as at the time the party submitted his nomination form. According to INEC, this was contrary to provisions of the Electoral Act of 2010 which required governorship candidates to be at least 35 years of age. The Young Progressive Party argued that INEC unjustly arrogated parts of disqualification to itself, saying that Section 31 of the Constitution vested such powers in the courts. Justice Okunabang, however, ruled that the disqualification of YPP was valid and INEC acted in line with the Constitution. The court also held that since it was a joint ticket, the disqualification of Ikolia Ibanda also invalidated the participation of Pere Agadabiri and the YPP in the coming Bayosa election. We are not really satisfied with the judgment and uh, we intend to take uh, the necessary steps in line uh, with the provisions of the law. When we consulted our clients, so we'll know whether we are going on appeal or not. A cost of 100,000 naira was awarded against the plaintiffs in Abuja or Labo Darewa, NTA News. The Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission has arraigned five suspected dealers of fake and unwholesome rice before a federal high court sitting in Uyo, Akwaibom State. Clement Bariku reports that the suspects were arrested at various locations in Uyo in 2018. The trial before Justice Anulika Okeke of the Federal High Court Uyo and one female and four males who were arrested in June 2018 when the then Consumer Protection Council, now Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, raided two rice depots in Uyo. 
The suspects are facing 17 count charges bordering on advertising and displaying for sale defective and rebut rice that are unfit for human consumption. The prosecuting counsel and director general FCCPC, Babatunde Irukera, said the trial is a warning signal to dealers on adulterated and contraband products in the country. Um, our position on this is simple, that uh, everybody must have their day in court. We would respect their rights, but the times when you could uh, violate the rights of consumers and uh, think that the worst that would happen is that your goods are confiscated must stop. They know their rights. They know what they are doing. They are selling rights that is not tainted by any poisonous, by any defect at all. The suspect pleaded not guilty to the 17 count charges. They were, however, granted bail in the sum of 5 million naira each, with sureties in like sum who must have landed property within the jurisdiction of the courts. The suspect were remanded in prison custody until the bail conditions are met, while the matter has been adjourned to December 4, 2019. In Uyo, Clement Barikui. President Muhammadu Buhari and his team have met with King Salman of Saudi Arabia. The two leaders reviewed ways to develop the relations between their countries in various fields. Details will be brought to you in our subsequent bulletin. Now, Vice President Yemi Oshibaju says achieving good governance and effective service delivery, particularly in Africa, requires absolute zero tolerance to corruption, as well as upscaling activities of institution fighting corruption. Professor Oshibaju stated this in a message at the maiden edition of International Ombudsman Expo Exhibition in Abuja. Ilias Walia Kubu reports. Africa is embracing ombudsman to check practices that made the continent to be tagged as hub of corruption, injustices, and bad governance. Renowned ombudsman General Temba Motanzima is on hand at this maiden edition of International Ombudsman Expo Exhibition, being attended by 15 African countries to chart a way forward. It has not been very, very smooth because, as a new thing, it has to be challenged. But I was delighted to have a team of uh, advocates working for me, and I think broadly we succeeded. Assisting uh, the African Union, especially on issues relating to uh, the Agenda 2063. So we, are, we tackle corruption from the roots. Are you you are just a lot. This issue? And Nigeria needs to do a lot of work to build its own institution very well. The increasing global appeal of ombudsman, which led to its establishment in 140 countries and provinces in the last 50 years, is encouraging. The concept of good, good governance is not only about form, but also about the quality of governance. In this regard, the government of Nigeria places high premium on good governance and contra the building of strong institutions and anti-corruption. This exhibition is to showcase achievements across the globe in pictorial, pamphlets, and other documents. In Abuja, Iliasu Aliakubu, NTA News. And from Abiyakuta, the federal government says it will continue to provide enabling environment for successful implementation of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals across the nooks and crannies of the country. Vice President Yemi Oshibaju stated this at the second Nation International Stakeholders Conference on Sustainable Development Goals organized by Civil Society Coalition on Sustainable Development held in Abiyakuta, the Ogun State capital. Hakim Jimo's report is hereby presented. The United Nations had in 2015 adopted 17 points agenda on sustainable development goals to make the world a better place for all. Since then, countries of the world, including Nigeria, had made progress in the implementation of the goals. To successfully attend these in all nooks and crannies of the country, stakeholders are holding the second international conference on SDGs in Abaokuta, the state capital, with the team. Localizing the SDGs at subnational level in Nigeria gains opportunities and challenges. 
while declaring the conference opened, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, who was represented, noted that government is evolving new techniques for the speedy implementation of the goals in all strata of the society. The government plan that will take us out of recession, and therefore uh, we came up with the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan 2017 to 2020. The EIGP has three cardinal objectives that of restoring economic growth, investing in people, and building a globally competitive economy. For others, including the representative of the senior special assistant to the president on SDGs, government cannot do it alone, calling on relevant stakeholders to join hands with the progressives to make Nigeria better. We critically examine how best to localize the SDGs and the role of CSOs in supporting the subnational government on this. I also commend the president for his economic coffee and growth plan to change the cost of the Nigerian economy. The high points of the event were the presentation of Ogun State Progress Survey Implementation Report and the decoration of the wife of the Ogun State Governor, Mrs. Bamidele Abiodu, as SDG champion. You are still watching Nationwide on this network service of the NTA. We'll take our first commercial break and come back shortly. Please stay with us. A building, democracy has its essential part. Security and peace form the core foundations of any prosperous democratic society. Insecurity deprives a society of the much needed stability for anything tangible to be achieved. In Kogi State today, there has been peace and stability in the past three and a half years. This didn't happen by accident. One man, Governor Yahya Bello, understands the need for peace as an essential ingredient for development. The issue of resolving insecurity in the land tops his table of preference. He provided security agencies with numerous patrol vehicles. Kidnappers' dens have been destroyed. Gangs of robbers have been arrested and prosecuted. Criminals are denied access to land. Kogi State has become one of the most peaceful states in the Nigerian Federation. He needs our support for further development on the solid foundation being laid. Think GYB, a rational choice. An award that has succeeded to pull a galaxy of stars from the north, south, east to the west, and central Africa. And also those that are domiciled beyond the shores of Africa, under one roof. Niger Delta to the Atlantic Ocean, inland waters and beyond. Activities of some unpatriotic Nigerians and criminals are, however, harming Nigeria and Nigerians. Say no to crude oil theft, pipeline vandalism, and illegal oil refineries. These criminal acts destroy the environment, kill maritime life, destroy the livelihood of farmers, fishermen, and reduce Nigeria's economy by billions of naira. Nigerian Navy patrols are working round the clock to secure Nigeria's maritime integrity. Support the Navy and say no to acts that destroy our collective resources. Stop these criminal acts. Blow the whistle. The long arm of the law will surely catch up with culprits. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Navy. Onward together. Nigeria Diaspora Investment Summit 2019 holds on the 6th to the 8th of November 2019. The summit will take place at the Banquet Hall Presidential Villa, Abuja, Nigeria. Theme, leveraging diaspora resources for economic growth, sectors, agribusiness, education, training, healthcare, entertainment, sports, hospitality and tourism, infrastructure and real estate, manufacturing, extractive industries, telecommunications, technology and innovation, waste management and environmental remediation, transportation. For registration, visit www.ndis.gov.ng. 
For participation and sponsorship, please call 090-177-7708-0817-224-4660. Convened by the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission. Featuring 30 contestants from five African countries, all grabbing that multi Guinness B vitamin goodness that fuels your greatness. Ghana, Nigeria, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, and Ethiopia. Which country will claim the 20,000 US dollar grand prize? Brought to you by multi Guinness, packed with B vitamins to fuel your greatness. Thank you for staying with us on Nationwide. Now, Nigeria should set an agenda and frame the narrative on issues of international concern such as modern-day slavery and migration with its negative connotation. Former Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Ignatius Olisemeke, emphasized this while delivering a speech at the 2019 Maiden Annual Foreign Policy Public Lecture organized by Association of Retired Career Ambassadors in Nigeria with the title Nigeria's foreign policy, evolution, trends, and perspectives. Since independence, a personal perspective. Oyemi Ajayi has details. Since independence, Nigeria's foreign policy has been based on three parallel circles. Nigeria's relations with our neighbors, Africa, and the world at large. This has been the policy adopted by different consecutive leaders who have used this to project our image and influence in world politics. This could be said about Nigeria's involvement in the liberation struggle and the independence of some African countries, contribution to the ECOWAS military force, ECOMOG, as well as support to other African countries and beyond. However, over time, experts say the strength of Nigeria's foreign policy has been affected with a series of challenges, and now the narrative must change. We should look further and deeper to other possible viable, less suffocating options where we can all feel comfortably secured. In recent years, our foreign policy has been at a crossroads. It is facing major global and domestic challenges. It is believed that for Nigeria's foreign policy to be stronger and more effective, there is the need for review. That the presidency, as part of its nine mandates, I mean nine point mandate that it has given to us as a ministry, has directed us to review Nigeria's foreign policy. Let us see how we maintain our dignity when we go to foreign land so that we are not abused. Because one of the problems of the foreign service of the foreign policy implementation is resources. Most of our missions are short of funds. They called for the full utilization of Nigeria's foreign policy as an instrument of national unity and development. In Abuja, Oye Yemi Ajayi, NTN News. Wife of the president, Aisha Muhammadu Buhari, has urged Africans to desist from stigmatizing women dealing with infertility. In a statement, Aisha Muhammadu Buhari made the appeal during a high-level panel discussion of African first ladies on challenges of building health care facilities in African continent. Aisha Buhari advocated the need for increased women empowerment, counseling and support for women dealing with infertility. The First Lady underscored the achievement of the Aisha Buhari Foundation and promised to assist in curbing stigmatization, depression and abuse. She calls for enhanced empowerment for women through medical support and seed capital for micro and small businesses. The event is the sixth edition of Mark Africa Asia Luminary More Than a Mother initiative for African First Ladies, co-chaired by First Lady of Ghana, Rebecca Akufo, ADDC, and Rasha Kelech, CEO of Mac Foundation. 
The federal government has inaugurated a three-man committee to manage the Niger Delta Development Commission on an interim basis. A statement by the head public relations of the agency, Patricia Dewerchi, says the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Goswil Apabio, inaugurated the committee in Abuja to take charge during the period of the forensic audit earlier ordered by President Muhammadu Buhari. Dr. Bene Nune is the new acting managing director. Dr. Cairo Ojogo, acting executive director of projects, while Ibanga Basi Itan is acting executive director, finance. Separate auditors and separate project uh, firms for each state. So that will make, make, make about nine slots in the, for the auditing firms. And then the headquarters itself, that will house the finances, the programs, and other things will also form a separate slot. The forensic audit is expected to cover the NNDC's operations between 2001 and 2019. The federal government has been called upon to repair the Shagamu Ogijo Ikorodu route to avert scarcity of petroleum products nationwide. Petroleum unions in a peaceful protest lamented the deplorable condition of the route, which is negatively affecting commercial activities along the axis. Lekon Obonde reports. These are drivers and assistants of these barrage of trucks along the Shagamu Ogijo Ikorodu Road, one of the highly commercial and great economic value to the nation. Ordinarily, this set of people rarely observe siesta, but circumstances have compelled them to take a nap being stalked on the spot for three days. One of the trucks fell due to the deplorable condition of the road and caused blockage that is responsible for their predicament. Loss of lives, property, and sufficient man hour is the perennial phenomenon on this road, which was constructed during the administration of the Western government of Obafemi Awolowo. We are facing a lot of hardship. You can see lineup of vehicles. Some vehicles have loaded from Mosimi, and, and over time, we have had a situation where by successive uh, ministers, uh, FEMA have come here to show us that this road is going to be repaired, but to all to no avail. This informed the protest by the unions. <laughs> I remember uh, losing millions of naira almost every week on this ferry road. You can see what happened now. This uh, this just happened yesterday evening. So we are using this opportunity to, uh, to ventilate our grievances. The federal government will give him express approval to construct this road, even if it means a concession of the road, even if it means we are going to pay toll. I know those are the things it is demanding from federal government, which they have not done. The unions want government to consider the importance of the road to do the needful. We know that the governor is doing something about this road. This is a federal road. And you know what is happening here. We have lost a lot of resources. And you can see nobody can pass this road. So we want government, you are appealing to them to come to our rescue and assist us. For now, everything in that axis is standstill as solutions are still not in sight, but the unions are threatening to shut down operation if federal government fails to take positive action from Ogijo in Shagamu area of Ogun State. Lekon Agbonde, NTA News. Now joining us live from Lagos Network Center is Ruth Ario. Ruth, how are you, how are you doing? Thank you, Nolene. I'm fine. And welcome to Lagos. Plans are on the way to bring back the Village Headmaster TV drama series and the television station with the widest coverage, the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, will remain the strong force to transmit the program to viewers, even those in hinterlands. Annie Daniels reports that the Director General of NTA, Malam Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, stated this at a round table to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the TV drama series in Lagos. 
Acclaimed as Nigeria's first and longest running television drama series, the village headmaster ruled the nation's airwaves for decades and promoted Nigeria's traditions, ethics, and values. This round table with the theme, Drama, a tool for national development, is aimed at taking a critical look at the potential that lie in drama, as well as repackaging the proposed new village headmaster television series to tackle social ills. We must go with what the generation needs. And if we give what they need, believe me, just as we accepted village headmaster, they will accept what we are offering. Do a proper production uh, that will attract the attention of the old, the young, everybody. Other speakers commended the initiative to bring back the drama, but we are quick to point out that in doing so, the characteristics of a good drama should be taken into cognizance. There's absolutely no reason for the program not to come back if funds are available to bring it back. The chief host, Director General of the Nigerian Television Authority, Malam Yakubi Ibn Mohammed says NTA's stance in promoting the village headmaster remains solid and unflinching. The whole essence behind our support for the whole thing is for us to appreciate the contributions of the pioneers of the village headmaster, uh, pay tribute to those of them that have passed on, uh, remember them, and of course look at the possibility of um, of uh, bringing up something similar you know, uh, you know, to the village headmaster. The event also created a platform for guests to applaud NTA for maintaining a high level of professionalism in its years of existence. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. Murtala Mohammed International Airport Command of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, has arrested a 54-year-old woman for ingesting 60 wraps of suspected had drugs. Commander Amadou Garba, in an exclusive interview with NTA News, said one 45-year-old Adindu Hyson was also arrested for ingesting 90 wraps of drugs. Abola De Salami reports. 54-year-old Suleiman Kudrat, whose flight was scheduled for United Kingdom, was arrested at the screening point of Muratala Mohammed International Airport when she tested positive for ingestion of hard drugs. While the command embarked on medical examination on the suspect for how to excrete all ingested drugs, another major arrest was made this time around a 45-year-old Obinna Adindu who was expected to catch a Lufthansa flight to Frankfurt, Germany. Commander National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, Muratala Mohammed International Airport Command, Amadou Gaba said, the agency will not compromise its standards in combating the use of illicit substance. I think people should learn to know that that is not the solution for two reasons. One, it's not even about being caught. First and foremost is, are you sure you're going to get there alive? I think that should be the first consideration. Then the possibility of you being caught is always there. Uh, definitely, uh, my officers are getting more capacity. So, uh, I think we are getting better at what we are doing. So if they don't stop, I think the officer will not stop. The suspects have proved guilty to the crime. I need to go and work there before they ask me to help them do this one thing. What are you going to do? I don't know. My friend is to leave the officer that's what I'm used to be. The command in its zero tolerance for illicit drug trafficking reports that in third quarter of 2019 made a total arrest of 24 suspects with 20 seizures weighing 99.511 kilograms. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Lagos. Nationwide continues after the break. Do stay with us. The new edition of TV Guide is out exclusively taking a look at the traditional television and new media. Are they comparable or complementary? Media industry players give perspective on the trends, progress, challenges and the way forward. Find out on this compelling edition of TV Guide. Expository interviews with stars of the team within our space. Becky Madagemo of NTA, Tibel Mori of AIT, Nifemi Ogutai of TVC and a host of others. TV Guide. 
Your indispensable companion also feature Ya Medina. A TV drama series on NTA. Let's get to meet the characters behind Ya Medina. This edition also presents exciting futures on tourism, culture, entertainment, sports, health, and lots more. Grab a copy at the vendors near you or any NTA station nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. the commencement of the most stimulating and compelling contest on television. This contest is only for the strong, the intelligent, and the talented. Get ready for the Unity Challenge reality TV show. Coming soon. was made in Africa with the birth of the first television station WNTV in Ibadan, Nigeria on October 31, 1959. I have great pleasure in formally launching Western Nigeria television first in Africa. Television in Africa clock 60 this year. It's time to celebrate this remarkable achievement. Various activities are lined up. Photo exhibition, a colloquium, public presentation of broadcasting books, and a gala night. Be part of these events powered by Foundation for Ibado Television Anniversary Celebrations, FITAC. Welcome back to Abuja. Expectations are high amongst the people of Taraba State as federal government is mobilizing resources for the takeoff of the Mambila Hydro Power Project in Taraba State. Minister of Power Saleh Maman assured that the next level agenda of the Buhari administration is determined to improve power supply in the country. Joshua Ojito reports. With the capacity to generate 3,050 megawatts of electricity to be added to the national grid, the Mambila Hydro Power Project is said to be the biggest power infrastructure in the country. To facilitate the commencement of this life-changing project in Taraba, the state governor, Dairos Ishaku, was in Abuja to build synergy with the Ministry of Power. It is time for us to close ranks and walk to the success of this gigantic project and to also make sure that our people back at home feel the impact of uh, the project. Taraba State will benefit more in this project more than any other states in terms of manpower, in terms of appointment, in terms of so many things. So I'm happy you are ready to work with the federal government, you are ready to give the federal government support. Upon completion, the project is expected to boost the economy of the state and the northeast. In Abuja, Joshua Ojito, NTA News. 
To ensure that the pace of urbanization does not affect Nigeria's overall development, Nigeria will continue to implement integrated sustainable growth strategies. Minister of State for FCT, Dr. Ramatu Tijani Aliu, stated this at the 50th National Conference of Nigerian Institute of Town Planners. Ayomiku Ajibolo has details. Noting that the proportion of city dwellers is rising at alarming rates both in Africa and Asia, and is predicted that the proposition is likely to reach 50% by the year 2025. The Minister said the urbanization is taking place at different speed in different continents. But by and large, President Muhammad Buhari is focused and is determined to give us a Nigeria of our dream, a 21st century country. So planning, organization, and solid architecture at a very high level of infrastructural development is given priority. When you regenerate the city, you find that you bring back certain sites that seems to have lost their relevance. You bring them back to relevance. You add value. The conference is expected to examine the goals and operation of regeneration in built environment, the problems, criticism and achievement in Nigeria, and to articulate how built environment could improve upon for sustainable development. In Ibadan, Ayomiku Ajibola, NTA News. Chine Nyengwoye is standing by with more stories from Enugu Network Center. Hello, Chine Nye. Hello, Molly. Thank you and welcome to Enugu. Ahead of the festive season, Oka residents are expressing fear over adulterated recordings. Okay, it appears we cannot continue with our Enugu Network Center due to bad audio. Moving on, governors of states of the Federation have agreed to be proactive to steer the country to greater stability. This they promise to achieve by closing the wide revenue gap to meet growing development needs of the states and the nation. The governors gave the assurance at the Nigeria Governors Forum meeting on internally generated revenue peer learning. Adebola Bruslin Sunday reports. Within the social contract framework, it is the responsibility of government to provide economic, political, social, cultural, and general welfare for its citizens. In order to address these thematic areas, the enabling structures through extant laws are activated, and this leads to efficient economic growth of the states. This meeting between state governors and commissioners of finance is working out modalities that will aid improvements in revenue generation by capturing more Nigerians in the tax nets. Tax policy and tax Chairman of the Governors Forum, Kayo Defayemi, said the revenue peer learning platform was designed to share reform experiences and consolidate actions. Your mandate to expand the revenue base is closely tied to our mandate, our promises to improve our citizens' quality of health care, of education, of infrastructure, in addition to providing social safety nets to the vulnerable and the underprivileged. While we have recorded significant strides in 11 states with IGRU growth rates of about 30%, I need to state that we are also confronted with less than optimal progress in a number of other states. Investment and job creation. World Bank Country Director Shubham Chaudhuri said the bank is satisfied with the economic policy of the present administration. His Excellency the President has talked about his ambition of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in the next 10 years. And that's what we as the World Bank are here to help support Nigeria, support the government, both at the federal level and at the state levels to do. The meeting agreed to place more emphasis on the development of infrastructure in their states through adequate revenue generated. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. It is their duty to check fraud and embezzlement in organizations under general fight against corruption as championed by the present government seems to be giving them more impetus to act. Olushe Yadebo reports on the 2019 National Conference of Internal e Auditors who converged on Nigerian Television Authority to sharpen their skills. 
Auditors have been the financial police, preventing, investigating, and detecting financial misappropriations, fraud, and other irregularities in organizations. The high rate of corrupt practices and financial recklessness in the country was partly attributed to inability of internal auditors to do their duties effectively. The fact that no organization is immune from fraud, internal auditors from all NTA stations across the country are holding a three-day conference to ensure that, as a front-runner in the anti-corruption war, the authority also gets its right. I want to assure you that at the end of this conference, participants will go back fully educated and equipped to tackle that monster called corruption. The team Financial Management and Fraud Investigation spells out clearly what they want to achieve and the Director General's message was the tonic they needed to raid NTA of fraud of any kind. In as much as you remain the professional watchdogs of the organization, much is suspected of you. Ensure that financial mismanagement is reduced by identifying the inadequacies and shortcomings in our existing system and correcting them without delay. All the speakers at the meeting also challenged the internal auditors to keep providing quality services and be accountable. Ahmed Rabiu has been an internal auditor for the NTA for more than eight years. His expectations, like every other participant, is to gain knowledge that will add value to his job. Anytime attending the conference, you have something to go with it. You learn a lot. If we learn much, I think we will go a long way and we'll be able to equip others. The conference, they believe, is a demonstration of NTA's commitment to the fight against corruption in Abuja. Lushaye Adiagbo, NTA News. Sakoto is our next port of call as we join Musa Abubakar for stories from that zone. How is Sokoto doing today, Musa? Good and welcome to Sokoto. As Niger remains the largest producer of onions in West Africa, lack of modern storage facilities have been identified as one of the challenges affecting production. This was one of the issues that dominated discussions when producers and marketers of onions from West and Central Africa converged on Sakwata State to brainstorm on how best to improve the production of the crop. Mohamed Nasser completes the report. Nigeria is ranked sixth among the top 10 producers of green onions and 11th in terms of dry season onions in the world, while Sokoto State is the highest producer of the crop in the country. Available statistics indicate that annual consumption of onion demand in Nigeria stands at 2.5 million metric tons per annum, while 1.4 million metric tons are produced, with 1.1 million metric tons as deficits. This necessitated importation of the crop into the country. Although Nigeria is the leading producer of onions in West Africa, farmers say they record huge post harvest loss. 50 to 60 percent of our onion, we are losing it to post, due to post harvest losses. So there is need for government to provide improved modern storage facility for this onion farmer. Market is a wider market. Sometimes the motor spoil than the road, the goose. We now sell it as to buy it. From here to Lagos, there is bad roads. A truck can take four days. When, when it goes there very late, you will find a lot of damages. Other challenges include insufficient improved seats and lack of technical know-how among farmers. Experts have for long been clamoring for support to enhance onions production. We are inviting investors. To, to market product we have here in Sokoto, we produce the largest onion in the country. Representative of Sultan of Sokoto, KB State Deputy Governor, Chairman Regional Observatory of Onion Sector in West and Central Africa, among other speakers, stressed the need for joint efforts to enhance onion production. In Sokoto, Muhammad Nasser, NTA News. The federal government has registered 86,000 persons to benefit from its cash transfer program in Zamfara State. Salama to Umar Abdullah reports that a three-day workshop on savings and group mobilization was held as part of the program. The report. 
cash transfer program was among the federal government programs under the office of the Vice President Yemi Osimbanjo, designed to assist women from rural areas as well as alleviate poverty, among others. 100 mobilization officers drawn from the six local government areas of Zamfara State are trained on how to save and start small-scale businesses under the program. Some of the beneficiaries said they have learned how to initiate a business and also to teach other women in their localities. The National Communication Officer, Harry Ayede, who represented National Coordinator of the program, Dr. Temi Topai Shikonye, said 86,000 people from six local government areas of Zamfara State are to benefit from the program. The ones we have enrolled so far currently in the next payment cycle will be taking place in November and December. They should start receiving their payments. And that is the reason why we are making preparation to ensure that the beneficiaries are equipped with the required skills on how to manage the money and utilize it very well. Cash transfer program presently covered 29 states of the Federation, where over 700,000 people enrolled. From Guso, Salamut Umar Abdullahi, NTA News. That's our contribution from Sokoto. Nationwide continues in Abuja. Thank you so much, Musa. Now in Abuja, both core and ad hoc staff of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, participating in the governorship elections in Kogi and Bielsa states must swear to an oath of impartiality, while all the candidates must sign a peace accord. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu stated this in Abuja ahead of preparations for the November 16th contest. The commission received some case files from the Nigeria police of alleged offenders generally during the 2019 general elections. We are studying the case files for further necessary action. We have repeatedly warned all staff of the commission to remain neutral and professional. All election duty staff will swear to an oath of neutrality as required by law. I will be in Inagoa along with the Inspector General of Police to address the stakeholders and to sign a peace accord on the 7th of November in Inagoa and the 11th of November in Lokoja. Our Benin Network Center is next with Ogo Chukukaona. Okay, I'm told we are going to for more stories from that zone. Thank you, Nolin, for rejoining us in Enugu. Ahead of the festive season, Oka residents are expressing fear over adulterated petroleum in the state and have called on relevant stakeholders to check the activities of the petrol dealers in order to forestall fire outbreak. Udo Okorun Kwachuku reports. Less than two months to Christmas, residents of Oka and Anambra states have stressed the need for effective monitoring of petroleum products to check adulteration as well as artificial scarcity during the festive period. The level of desperation witness has, especially during the festive period, led to loss of lives and property to fire outbreak, which normally occurs as adulteration. In a task force that we go around to checkmate it. Some, some meters in Anambra State is not complete. Some they, they adjust it. If they adjust them now, the fuel cannot, cannot be completed. So at times, if you buy fuel of one five or 2,000 now, they cannot use it and go two, three. Residents are therefore of the opinion that the DPR should focus more on sales of petroleum products. We keep telling the public, we keep sensitizing them to report any such case to our office. They have our numbers, they know our office. If you see any case of diversion or adulteration, they should report to DPR office here in Oka. Consumers are assured of a fair deal in the festive period. Oka, Udo Okoron Kwachuku, NTA News. And as part of activities for the commencement of exercise at Ilogu Doan in the southeast zone, the 82 Division Nigeria Army today conducted an environmental sanitation exercise at the Owete Main Market in Ugu. Jude Abugu monitored the exercise and now reports. The officers and men of the division were led on the environmental sanitation exercise. General Officer Commanding 82 Division Nigerian Army, Brigadier General Lassisi Adeboye, the soldiers swept the market entrance and cleared the drainages before evacuating the heaps of refuse occupying some strategic points around the Holy Ghost Cathedral and Old Park. <laughs> 
Special attention was given to this dumpster in front of Furniture South Mass Transit Park, which had heaps of sand combined with refuse on it. The staff of Furniture South Mass Transit and traders around the area expressed shock at the volume of refuse that was cleared from the spot. This place used to be so dirty that it affects customers to come and attend to me. This road has been a very dirty and filthy road, but the activities that have gone on here today at least you can see, somebody can stay here and eat. That's community work. Ah, so we hear the military. We hear them. The officers and men were supported by the military band and the army medical team as they contribute their quotas at ensuring the environmental cleanliness of the state. In Enugu, Jude Abugu, NTA News. And that is it from Enugu. Nolin is back to you in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Thank you so much, Ichinenge. Now to sports news. President Muhammadu Buhari has commended the Golden Eaglets of Nigeria in their second game at the ongoing under-17 FIFA World Cup competition, which saw them winning 3-2 after they had trailed Ecuador by 1 to 15 minutes to the end of the match. In a statement, the president noted that the determination, persistence and resilience of the team turned the table against their opponents. While wishing the Eaglets well in their final group match against Australia, which may well be a formality, President Buhari pledges government's support to the team as they strive to win the Under-17 World Cup yet again, thus confirming Nigeria's position as a global power at that level. And now to sports update.